Today we're going to look at a problem that's famously on several different team selection tests for math Olympiad teams from several different countries. And I would say that the purpose of this problem is to ensure that the students know about a really important result when it comes to problem solving contests. So let's look at the problem first and then we'll look at this theorem that we'll use and then we'll look at our solution. So the problem goes like this. Our goal is to find all natural numbers A, B, and C, and prime numbers P, so that A to the P plus B to the P is equal to P to the C. So notice that it starts to look like maybe something related to Fermat's last theorem, but instead of having a C to the P over here on the right-hand side of the equation, it's like flipped. The exponentiation is flipped, if you will. It's P to the C. And then, well, what's this nice result or very important result that we'll use here? Well, it's called Sigmundy's theorem, and it says the following. So if n is bigger than or equal to 3, then there's a certain prime p that divides a to the n plus b to the n, but it does not divide a plus b. But that actually fails exactly in one case, and that one case is the case of 2 cubed plus 1 cubed. So observe that 2 cubed plus 1 cubed is equal to 9, which is 3 squared, and 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So 3 is really the only prime that divides either of those. Whereas in all other cases, there's going to be a prime that divides this sum, but not this sum, like we said before. Okay, so now let's maybe get started real quick. So maybe let's start first with maybe the easy case. I'll call it case one. And that's the case when our prime is bigger than or equal to three. Okay. But now let's notice that the only prime that divides a to the p plus b to the p is p. And that's because a to the p plus b to the p is a power of, well, that prime. Let's also note the following factorization. So we can write a to the p plus b to the p as a plus b times a to the p minus 1 minus a to the p minus 2 times b plus a to the p minus 3 times b squared all the way down to plus b to the p minus 1. So something like that. But uh, let's maybe extend this off the left to write this as p to the c. But what we've done over here on the right hand side is factored this thing that's a product or a power of this prime. So that means that both of these terms are powers of p. So let's just say this is a power of p. And I'd like to notice that it's more than the zeroth power of p because a plus b is bigger than one. And then this thing over here is also a power of p. But the thing that we're noticing here is that the only prime dividing a plus b and a to the p plus b to the p is p. But of course, that's going to be a, contradic a contradiction to Zygmunt's theorem unless we have p is equal to 3 and, well, a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 1. So that means that, well, that has to be the case, again, because no such setup exists otherwise. So let's write that down. So that means we have p is equal to 3, a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and observe that means that c must be equal to 2. Because what we've done here is expressed this 2 cubed plus 1 cubed is equal to 3 squared formula. Okay. So, well, we've got one set of solutions here. Let's, well, maybe put it over here in a purple box before we move on to the other case. That other case is the case when p is equal to 2. 
In other words, P is the only even prime. Okay, so let's get to that. Okay, so now moving on to our second case, really our only remaining case when P is equal to two, let's see how that's gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna start by doing the following. Write A as two to the power K times an odd number. So we're like dividing all of the two-ness, if you will, out of, well, both A and B. So I can write this as an odd number as two times M plus one, where now we're taking M to be bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so now I'm gonna do something similar over here for B. I'll write it as two to the L times two times N plus one. So again, we factored out all of the powers of two that we could. Okay, so now let's rewrite our equation over here with our setup. We're calling that P is equal to two. So here we're gonna have two to the K times two M plus one all squared plus two to the L times two N plus one all squared is equal to two to the C power. But now, maybe without loss of generality, let's assume that we have ordered A and B so that perhaps L is bigger than or equal to K. So, okay, so like I said, let's do that. So now that means that we can factor out maybe a two to the two K from this equation right here. So let's do that. So we factor out a two to the two K and we're gonna be left with two M plus one squared. And then we'll also have, let's see, two to the two L minus two K times two N plus one squared is equal to two times, or two to the C power. And that's gonna bring us to two little subcases. And well, this first subcase is if K is not equal to L. But let's observe that if K is not equal to L, then all of this stuff in parentheses right here must be an odd number. Because we've got, this is most definitely even if K is not equal to L, because this is a power of two, and then this is an odd number. But if this is odd, then that means all of the powers of two over here on the left-hand side are two to the two K meaning that 2k must be equal to 2c and we can divide it over. And that leaves us with the following equation. So we'll have 2m plus one squared plus two to the 2l minus 2k times 2n plus one is equal to one. Again, because we know that those both have to be the same powers of two. But let's observe that this equation doesn't make any sense. And we can see that because this left-hand side is most definitely strictly bigger than one, just based off the fact that M and N are both bigger than or equal to zero. So this part is bigger than or equal to one, and then that part is, well, in fact, bigger than or equal to two. So, well, like I just said, that means that this equation doesn't make sense. In other words, we've reached a contradiction, contradicting this fact that K is not equal to L. And so that means the only other possibility must be the true possibility, which is K is equal to L. Well, let's observe that this bit right here, this two to the two L minus two K is really two to the zero, which is one. And well, we can rearrange our equation up here to be two M plus one squared plus two N plus one squared is equal to two to the power C minus 2k. So something like that. But now we can expand out this left-hand side and rewrite it as 4 times m squared plus n squared plus m plus n uh, and then plus 2 is equal to 2 to the c minus 2k. But observe that this left-hand side is most definitely even, meaning we can divide both sides by two one more time. That'll give us two times m squared plus n squared plus m plus n, uh, and then outside of those parentheses is plus one is equal to two to the c minus two k, and then minus one. So we're left with something like that. 
But now notice that the left hand side is odd, that meaning the right hand side is odd, but the right hand side is odd if and only if that exponent is zero, in which case the right hand side is equal to one. But all of that tells us that, well, this stuff in parentheses must be zero, leading to m equals n equals zero. And let's see, we have c is equal to 2k plus one. But observe that that really takes care of everything. We have our second really infinite set of solutions here. We have a is equal to, well, two to the k. We have b is also equal to two to the k, because remember k was equal to l. And then we have c is equal to two uh, times k plus one. And well, maybe we'll fit in right here the equation that this is building just to get a visual on that. So what we've got here is two to the k quantity squared plus two to the k quantity squared is equal to two to the two k plus one. But that equation is pretty clearly true. And in fact, it's the only equation maybe that we can make of this form where the prime is equal to two. Okay, so just to summarize here, what are our solutions? So our only solutions to this equation right here are this one in the purple box when p is equal to three, which is the special exceptional case of Sigmundy's theorem. And then the p equals two case that we found down here, which is actually an infinite family. And that's a good place to stop.